Today's guest is a very gifted, very talented man. He's got songs all over the radio and even hit songs in motion pictures. He's a good friend of mine and his name is John Waller. This is Babby's House. It's coming up right now. Hello and welcome to Babby's House. I'm your host, Babby Mason, and thank you for joining me today. You know, I'm so grateful that the Lord brings people in your life. You know how things kind of go in cycles and circles, and this young man um, has been a part of our life and even our ministry for a lot of years now, and the Lord has just launched his ministry into uh, just a wonderful place. His name is John Waller, and he's written some great songs and songs all over the radio and songs in motion pictures and and the thing I love about John Waller is he's just humble and steadfast and and just keeping his eye on Jesus. And it's such an encouragement to see him today. I want you to meet him in just a moment. He's such a fine young man with a great message, a godly man with a great message. You're going to meet him in just a moment. But right now, I want to go to the Word of God and that inspired me to write this song. Romans chapter 8 tells us that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. His love reached from the heavens to the far ends of the earth to give you life forever. He left no stone unturned. And before the birth of time, Jesus had you on his mind, so you never need to question his concern. So what can separate you from the precious love of God? Who could ever come against his strong and perfect love? So when you're and your nights are cold and lonely The darkest hour is just before the dawn Remember nothing can separate you from God's love each and every star and he calls them all by name he counts them one by one and sees that they are still in place if he cares for every star then he sees right where you are you can trust you'll never fall from his embrace so what can separate you from the precious love of God? Who could ever come against his strong and perfect love? So when you're in the valley and your nights are cold and lonely, the darkest hour is just before the dawn remember nothing can separate you neither pain or sorrow not today and not tomorrow nothing past and nothing present nothing future Separate you from the 
precious love of God. Remember, nothing can ever come against His strong and perfect love. So when you're in the valley and your nights are cold and lonely, the darkest hour is just before the door. Remember nothing, absolutely nothing. Oh, remember nothing can separate you from God's love. No. Does retirement have to wait until my 70s? He's a great college for our kids. Out of the question? Is the American dream? Out of our reach? Not if we can help it. We're the National Endowment for Financial Education, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people just like you get smart about their money. Log on to smartaboutmoney.org today and start taking control of your financial life. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Stronger, healthier babies. It's what the March of Dimes is all about. Learn more about healthy babies at marchofdimesbaby.org. Soccer. All across America, it's how kids get fit and have fun. Join us. Go to usyouthsoccer.org. Oh, thanks for coming back here on Babby's House. I'm so blessed to have John Waller in the house today, and John and I go back a few years. And uh, But it's just so good to see how God has been so faithful over the years and over time and how the Lord has just stirred up John Waller's gift and bringing that wonderful gift of singing and songwriting to the surface. And now John Waller is, is has music literally all over the radio. And you've heard his music in motion pictures like Fireproof. And he's got a great story of how God has continued to be faithful in his life. He just keeps showing up for work, and I'm glad he's here today. John Waller, welcome to Babby's House. Babby. You've been a guest before, so good I to see have. you back. It's good to be back, back, back in Babby's House. Absolutely, John. Yeah. So catch us up, man, and tell us what God's doing and and uh, how you're enjoying this path. I just learned that you 17 years of marriage. We married 16 years, 16 but you years. and I met 17 years ago. Yeah. And you got a house full of kids, number five yeah, on the way. And number five on the that's way. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Uh, well, talk to us about what, what you know, is going on in your life and ministry these days and what the Lord is doing. Yeah, I, um, I just finished a new record called uh, As For Me and My House. And, um, mm, awesome. You know, I, I've, uh, I love to write songs, and, and that's probably one of your favorite uh, pastimes of Absolutely. sitting down and writing a, a good song. And, and John, you're, you're such a fine writer. I remember Thank back you. in the day when you first came to the Babby Mason Music Conference. Yeah. Uh, for years, we have been doing um, ongoing seminars and conferences for singers and writers. 
and years ago uh, John Waller came to the Babby Mason Music Seminar as a young writer and singer and walked away with our grand prize uh, <laughs> as one of the finest writers that ever walked through the conference. Oh, wow. Went out to Estes Park and a big music conference out there in the Rocky Mountains and just took us all by storm and we've just seen God just do mighty things in your life so I just had to insert that <laughs> just to kind of give God the glory for yeah. the track record. Well, when we um, when I came into your seminar, it was just the first thing that I ever done like that, and um, and I was so encouraged, you know, by everything that I learned, and you know that that was I that was probably one of the first uh, uh, you were probably one of the first to do that in this area, mm -hmm. and um, and it really um, it just kind of for me when I won that seminar, you know, the grand prize, I, I thought I, I literally thought I had arrived, and. You know that was going to be the big time for me, and <laughs> <laughs> but little did I know that you know Lord, the Lord uh, was going to spend the, quite a few years developing uh, the gift He's given me for the mm -hmm. calling that He's called me to, and mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like my calling in songwriting is to is to write declaration songs, songs that take Scripture and put them to music. You know, where people, if they're singing with me and singing one of my songs. They're literally uh, declaring the word of God with mm -hmm. their mouth, Amen. and there's nothing more powerful. Faith comes by hearing the word, mm -hmm. and um, and so that's kind of what I feel called to do is put God's word to music, you know. That's and awesome. so that's what I've been doing for the last, I guess I've been doing it about 20 years now, mm -hmm. and and God's given me some incredible opportunities. Uh, one of the biggest things that ever has ever happened for me was uh, when my song uh, "While I'm Waiting." Um, was uh, picked to be in the movie Fireproof. What, what's that like? You know, um, it was the most amazing. I mean, obviously, most movies have music, and a lot of times, you know, songs and movies you barely even notice. Well, this happened to be a song where they uh, featured it, and they played the whole song. So it was a montage, and so when I first heard my song in that movie, it was incredible, and and people um, asked me if I wrote the song for the movie. But um, I'd written the song a couple of years before the movie came out, but it's about waiting on God, you know. And I, you know, back in uh, 94 when I met you and I thought I'd, I'd arrived, uh, it, was, it was literally, uh, you know, 13 years later before I got my first record deal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that was, uh, it was tough, but I, I understand, you know, that waiting on the Lord is something we all have to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one day I, someone encouraged me just to write about it, you know. You know, when you're going through something, you, you, you sit down, you write about it. It's, yeah. and it's usually things that people can relate to, and you right. want to meet people where they are, and that's what I try to do in my music. You know, John, Jonathan, I, uh, John, I can certainly understand where you come from and, and where you're going, and oftentimes we, we, just, we wish that God would hurry it up. Yeah. You know, we wish <laughs> that God would get us on the fast track. Right. Um, what, is, what is one of those, uh, one of those key principles, one of those key... Um, ingredients that that you learned while you were waiting well I, I found that that you know my character and, and, and my, you know who I am as a man came uh, through a lot of years of waiting wow. a lot of valleys and you know for years I um, you know I suffered from from clinical depression and uh, from the time I was 12 to the time I was 30 um, 33 actually, and, and God completely delivered of me, me of that seven years ago. Praise God. Yeah, but you know, I, I've had to, I look back on all those years of, of having to wait and, and, and wait some more and wait some more, and, and at the same time, God was all the, through those years was refining me. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I wouldn't have anything to say uh, to your audience or, or to, you know, wherever I go. I, to be able to sing and to speak with authority, I mean, you literally have to, it takes time. Yes. Uh, not just time, but, but time submitted to God and allowing him to, to prune us, to mm -hmm. break us, shake mm -hmm. us up. Mm -hmm. um, and so waiting is very important, but he, but he does promise that he will keep us going and he'll renew our strength if we will we will wait on him. Amen. If something is presented before it's time, it's it's half baked and or right. or overdone, and, <laughs> and it's not usable. That's right. And uh, then we abort God's plan. Um, you're you're a family man with a yeah. beautiful family, and I know you're connect very well connected to your home church. Yeah. Because um, my my son works and attends, and works at the church that yeah. you attend. Um, talk to me about the importance of 
remaining connected to your home church? Because I, I tell you, John, I meet a lot of people that do what we do. They're on the road. They're on the road week in and week out, and and uh, they very rarely are connected <clears throat> to their home church. Right. And so, tell me why that's important to you. Well, you know, for 12 years, um, you know, I had pursued Christian music. Um, the last, uh, probably uh, the last five years um, before I, because there, there was a period when I gave up the dream of Christian music, mm -hmm. laid it down, put it aside. Um, but I was in a band for quite a few years called According to John. Uh, go figure that I would name it According to John. But, uh, but when I was in that band, we traveled all the time and we became, I became very disconnected from the church. And so I really, when, when I would write songs, I really didn't know what the heartbeat of God was mm. and what the heart, because the local church is where you want to, that's where you're going to find the heartbeat of what the Lord is doing because it's, it's the body of Christ and you're going to find what God is doing by being a part of that. And, um, and so I, I was disconnected from that. And then, you know, my, my dream almost happened on, on a big scale, you know, with my band, according to John. But then it fell apart, and, and, and we almost got a record deal, but then it didn't happen. Um, that was about the time the Lord delivered me and healed me from my depression, uh, completely delivered me of the medication and everything. Praise God. But after that, I, I got a call to help plan a church in Colorado. And so I moved out there and became a worship pastor. Mm -hmm. That was when I really began to understand what God uh, is doing in the body of Christ. And I began to write songs uh, you know, that really hit people, uh, minister to people in, within the church because I understood for the first time what, what it means to be a functioning member of the body. Mm -hmm. and it's important. And, that is so important. That and is it's so a core, key. Yeah, it's a core value that I've really, mm -hmm. that I gained, you know, about seven years ago and, and I've kept it because I understand that, that, that uh, I need the, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I need to be connected to Absolutely. my circle of yes. community of faith. Yes, yes. Um, you know, John, when I met you years ago, you were barely out of your teens. Right. A young single man with a, you know, with an infant ministry that was, you know, catching on and, and uh, you know, a message and a dream. And, you know, here you are, you know, 15, 16 years later. Uh, talk to me about your message. Now that you're married with a family, you know, has, has, has your message you know, changed or has it grown? Right. Has it transitioned? What's what's the what's what's on John Wallace's heart today? Well, you know, the, the, my newest project, uh, as for me and my house, um, the Lord really spoke to me um, through the Scripture of Joshua, and, and Joshua leading the children of Israel uh, into the Promised Land. Joshua being one of two who actually left Egypt, who actually made it to the Promised mm -hmm. Land. You know, and as Joshua was about to die. Uh, you know, he says, uh, if serving the Lord seems difficult to you, then choose this day whom you will serve, whether you serve the gods that your forefathers served in Egypt or you serve the gods uh, in the land that you're now living. Uh, uh, or, but he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Amen. he drew a line in the sand. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, you know, as a father of almost five, um, you know, I'm realizing that, that I have to lead my family, you yes. know, and there's a lot of things that compete for, for my love for God. There, there are a lot of things that, uh, there's a lot of attacks of the enemy and there's a lot of strategies that the enemy is trying to, to kill, steal, and destroy and take out my marriage. And, you know, I just came to a place where I'm like, you know, I have to be like Joshua and I have to draw a line in the sand and said, you know, the idols in my life are coming down. You know, and Lord, you identify those idols. What are, yes. And for me, you know, music was a big idol. Yeah. Christian It becomes music. Our, our God. It becomes oh. the thing that we serve. Yeah. It, it idols is self-serving. Idols are good, usually good things. They can be bad things, but they're usually things that God's given us. I mean, uh, Abraham had Isaac. Isaac became an idol, and, mm -hmm. and, and the Lord put his heart to the test. Mm -hmm. So I've had to lay the music thing down quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I've just, I really... My, my ministry is to the families, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so good. Yeah, married couples with kids. And mm -hmm. uh, there's several songs on this album that really just deal with the family and marriage and, and those, those kind of things. And so. the song that you're going to sing for us today is called? 
Well, I, I picked the song for today. Uh, it's called Somebody Else's Story. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I picked it is because, uh, you know, just reminiscing with you about uh, just the impact that you made on my life, you know, I mean, that, and, and I know you didn't realize it at the time, but that's huge for me. When I look back on that moment in my life, that was a big moment for me that you invested in me. And so it's all about being a part of someone else's story yes. of redemption. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely, John. Listen, I am so glad that you came here today to remind me of the importance that, you know, somebody's taking notes on you <laughs> and somebody's behind you. Somebody's following and you're impacting and influencing That's right. somebody's and somebody did that for me. That's right. But stand by. We're going to hear you sing in just a moment. Thanks for being with me today. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you. After this after this break, John Waller's going to sing for us. So don't go anywhere. After this break, we'll be right back with more of Babby's House. and loved ones who live with mental illness. All we want to do is connect. To understand, NAMI can help. I'm Dr. Linda Van Eldick, a biomedical scientist supported by the American Health Assistance Foundation. I conduct research aimed at discovering new and effective treatments for Alzheimer's disease. This is critical because more than a thousand Americans develop Alzheimer's every day. At our website, you can learn how to live with or care for someone with the disease. Call 1-800-437-2423 or go to ahaf.org for a free brochure on understanding Alzheimer's disease. Like lightning on the Great Plains, a spark ignites the imagination of a young 4-H member named Ryan. As a teenager, Ryan explores the wonders of nature. As a young man, he experiments, discovering new possibilities. As a scientist, Ryan uses a new technology to detect an invisible tumor in a little girl's eye. The 4-H commitment of fostering one million new scientists and engineers is being embraced by companies and universities around the country. With their help, 4-H is growing the next generation of great thinkers like Ryan. 4-H, one million new scientists, one million new ideas. Welcome back to Babby's House. I'm so glad you came back because I don't want you to miss one single note of John Waller's music. And by the way, his website is johnwallermusic.com. Now, let's go to the music stage and welcome John Waller. <laughs> Finding love, somebody finding love unfailing. And I want to be a part, I want to be a part of somebody finding life, somebody finding life everlasting. And I want to play a part, I want to play a part of somebody finding hope. Somebody finding hope in God of heaven. It's my desire, Lord, you will use me to change somebody else's destiny. Cause I want to be a part, I want to be a part of somebody else's story. Somebody I pray 
gonna be apart Somebody finding comfort Somebody finding comfort when they're hurting I wanna play a part, I wanna play a part Of caring for the widow Sheltering the orphan It's my desire Lord, you would use me To change somebody else's destiny Cause I wanna be a part I wanna be a part Of somebody else's story Somebody else's story Of redemption I wanna be Story of redemption. 